Hello, so today we're going to talk about the next step in the project behind me. It is the telephone exchange in This Museum's Not Obsolete, a museum that celebrates obsolete technology in the hope to give it a new lease of life, hopefully. Well, all of these beige boxes stemmed from a rabbit hole I sort of fell down when I was making a relay-based step sequencer. It was an eight-step musical sequencer that worked a bit like a relay computer. Below that video, there was a comment to check out step-by-step -step switches. This mixed with a local BT engineer called Chris telling me about all of the interesting things that were inside old exchanges. It was a world that I must have I never knew existed. I never really put a thought into what actually happened between two phones. But when I found a demonstration video on YouTube of what actually went on, well, I'd never seen anything quite like it. And a flick in my brain switched and it was like, oh no, this is gonna have to be seen through. A couple of days later, I managed to find one of these selector switches and I did a little video about it explaining that I didn't have a clue what it was and I want to figure it out. This video caused quite a lot of people to actually come out of the woodwork to describe what it was and how it worked and even sent over some documents to check out to get it up and running. It was quite the rabbit hole, I've got to tell you. About eight months ago, I got hold of this thing right here. It is a UAX13 Rack A. And when I got hold of it, it had been stored for a bit of a while outside under a piece of tarpaulin. So it wasn't in the greatest of condition. It meant that I had to fix it from the ground up and really had to sit down and figure out what the fudge it was doing. Well, ever since the start of this project, I've been mentioning the plan of plugging it into the internet so people can call in from anywhere and control it and stuff and yeah, call anything and all the synthesizers that will soon be plugged into it. And that is what the video is about today. So at the start of last week, I made a bit of rearranging to make space for another UAX13 Rack Hay, the one right here. I got the second one because basically the more selectors you have, the more traffic you can actually deal with and at the same time the more reliable the whole setup would be because let's say if one of these switches is being funny you can unplug it so it kind of just goes to the next one and then fix it later of course. Malcolm who I initially got hold of this one from got me in touch with Shane who I got this one from and yeah we drove down to Torquay me and Chris the aforementioned BT engineer because he offered to lend a hand because these things are pretty damn heavy so we got to Torquay to meet Shane and we had a look at his pretty amazing collection he's collected all manner of I guess UK public service technology this is Shane in front of a motorized bus sign and yes he did have one spare and yeah we did strike up a deal and yes one of those bus signs did end up in the van on the way home to here <laughs> Oh yeah, you'll see that soon. He showed us everything in his Aladdin's cave and it was all wired in. And then he took us out to the back garden which had even more stuff. Traffic lights, phone boxes, and a massive shed that was basically a whole UAX 13 telephone exchange. That thing was absolutely crazy and he showed us around the whole thing. Wow, what an amazing opportunity and a great day to meet Shane and see all of that stuff. After that, we wrestled one of the UAX 13 racks into the van and then out again. These things are about 400 to 450 kilograms without the switches. so there's still a bit of a lump in their own. We couldn't get this up. It was a little bit too heavy and the place was a little bit too tight. Now it's sat in place and ready to start working on. I started by putting all the switches back in, double checking everything and yeah, hoping for the best. Then I had to wire all of the common services into the back of the rack. This included power, it included the ringing generators, you know, all the bring brings and stuff like that. It was quite quick and easy because everything was already wired into the rack next to it. And then lo and behold, it started ticking along enough to give it all a test. Hello? So now the racks are working enough in themselves, we need to tackle the other part of this project, and that is wiring it into the internet. There is a service that actually does this kind of thing already called CNET. However, it didn't exactly work the way I was hoping. So it was about finding another way. This has been something I've been messing around for a few months now, and I've got to be honest, it really got me a little bit stumped. But out of the mist, an angel came in the shape of Will. Will being a BT technician fired over an email saying that he had an idea of how to actually make it work. And a couple of months later, after a couple of phone calls back and forth he popped over with the solution in a cardboard box Yo. how's it going so will in this box yes what, what's in this box so in this box is a very boring looking computer tower but yeah. what's on it is a, a pbx server based off asterisk 
Um, some little USB interfaces, which will go in there in a little while. Ah. They will hopefully take your calls. Got a SIP service running. The SIP trunk then connects to a virtual server, which is on this machine here, uh, which is running FreePBX, which is based on asterisk. And then that is connected to four little soft phone things, which all go to different audio outputs. It's a, like a rough and ready way of picking up the four lines after they've been sat in a queue. What it'll do is it'll play the DTMF tone when it answers it, which will clear anything that's on the exchange already uh, and like set you up for the call. Should work. Yeah, fingers <laughs> crossed, fingers crossed. Yeah. Oh, wow. Will brought that to the museum about a month ago now, but it means that everything is coming together. As it means we can have multiple calls coming in on the same phone number, and it will be split off into different outputs into the exchange. The ultimate plan, giving this the ability to have four separate calls coming in from around the world, as well as having multiple calls being able to be placed in the museum itself. It's gonna be pretty funky. The next issue is getting the setup from Will to actually talk successfully to the telephone exchange. It turns out to be quite simple, actually. It's the M H88422-3. On here is a few opto isolators and a little mixer. It's got everything that it needs to be able to plug the phone line in on one side and any other audio source, computer or synthesizer into the other side. But this magical chip still sadly doesn't solve all of our problems. We have one big problem left to go actually. The kind of phone that people will usually be calling in on looks something like this. And this uses DTMF, dual tone multi-frequency, to be able to send the numbers across the phone line. It's those bleep and bloops when you type a number in on your phone. <laughs> and the telephone exchange sadly doesn't talk in that language, it talks via pulses. So the type of phone that talks to these exchanges has two wires going into it. When you lift it up, you see these little uh, switches right here, that makes a connection and makes a loop between the two wires. And then if you want to hang up the phone, you just put it down again. But since there's only two wires going in, how does it actually ring the numbers? Well, in a way, it sort of picks up the phone and hangs up really quickly. And that's the pulse dialing that this thing seems to talk to. So we pick up the phone, and what we actually do to try and call a number is just tap it really quickly. Not giving it enough time to hang up, but giving it enough time for it to actually go up the switch. Ah, I got the wrong number. Ah, I got the wrong, oh yeah, I was, why am I hanging up? Right, let's try again. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then as you can see, it just jumped up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hey! Oh, here we go. What number even is it? Here we go, the last tap. Hey! Hello? And then if you look at it this way, hanging up is just dialing a really long number. Woo. So the problem is literally an electronic equivalent to me talking to somebody in a different language with a translator right there. So I'm talking and the translator's translating to them so they can understand. That's what we need, but an electronic version. Let's have a look at the plan. So right here, we've got an Arduino Nano, we've got a DTMF converter, and we have the MH88422-3. And if you were smart, you could merge these two together using a Teensy. So that means you just need the Teensy and the interface board. The Arduino is the brain, this is the ear, and this is the mouth. So a quick description of what's going on here. The audio is coming in from the computer and that is going into pin 7 of the interface device which is audio in which sends audio straight to the phone line that is a phone line on the other side of the board going between pins 9 and pins 14 the audio in also wires to the input of the DTMF converter this is what listens to the DTMF tones so that means the audio goes through this and out into the phone line and also into the DTMF converter so both of these are listening what the DTMF converter is listening to is the dual tones from the phone when you're typing beep, boop, beep, boop. and it is converting every single one that it sees into a four bit piece of data. You can see the lights flashing here. That's basically four bit data of the different numbers that it is receiving. This piece of information is wired directly into the Arduino Nano via the digital pins D3 up to D7. What happens is this here's a number being dialed and it tells the Arduino what number that is. The Arduino then translates that information that it's just received into the pulses. So if you dial a number three, the DTMF converter receives that information and then sends it into the Arduino and that translates it into one, two, three, out of D8. D8 wires into the pin four of the interface and that controls the on and off of this, which in turn pulses the telephone exchange. After all of that malarkey, the telephone exchange then sends the audio back and it comes out of pin six, which is the audio output. And that wires via a 330K resistor. You can adjust this for volume and then that goes into the audio out of everything over there. Well, I hope that mush of words made sense.
The next step is programming the Arduino to do what it's supposed to do. I started by doing a Patreon blog last week of the plan that I had and the drawbacks at what I was going to plan to code it like and if anybody had any suggestions of how to make it work a little bit better. Typing a zero on DTMF is instantaneous, however when you type a zero on a pulse it requires 10 pulses to actually count up to zero. It's transferred into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It takes a whole second near enough to actually dial a zero in pulse dialing. And by that time the person and might have actually typed a load of numbers on the DTMF phone. I'm rubbish at coding and I couldn't really figure out a decent way of making this work without actually losing the extra numbers that the person dialed in. So I asked on the vlog on Patreon if anybody had any solutions and I was amazed by the amount of responses of how many people wanted to pitch in. That very night there was a group coding session between Caustic, Mark, Net, David and Roland and I sat in on that and enjoyed the process and also Paul Strufferjian, the mastermind behind the Teensy, actually figured out a way of squeezing it down into just a Teensy instead of requiring a DTMF. DTMF converter as well. All of this code, by the way, is linked below. However, we all ended up agreeing that a piece of code by Keith was the way to go because it didn't drop any numbers whatsoever. Actually, that must be him right now. Hello? The DTFM decoder sends an interrupt to the Arduino, which then reads the digit into the input pointer of a circular buffer. The output pointer of the circular buffer then drives the state machine that pulses out the digit. Both can occur at different speeds without anything being lost. It's fully asynchronous. Well, thanks a lot, Keith. This code is solid as a rock. With this method, we're able to simultaneously type in DTMF tones and translate them to pulse styles, which means that you don't actually lose any numbers that you type in. So for instance, if you type 10 zeros, it remembers them all and sends them all back in pulse style. I'm gonna call it. <laughs> And now we're in. Oh God. Ah. Right, so right, now right you can hear me. Can hear me. Uh, this will only show you two numbers and it'll go ticka ticka ticka. So six, nine, zero, zero. No dropouts. Now it's time to plug it into the exchange and test it. Right, so one line is plugged in. Let's give it a call. 01843808393. Can you hear that? You can hear it. So let's um let's try it and call. Hello, Sam. Oh, oh, feedback. Well, it works. Now we're going to hang up again. Now let's see if we can call Techmoan over on the announcer. What we need to do is dial a five there, and that'll take it over to here where Techmoan is. So five. Oh, oh, oh. And now it's over here. Let's finish it. Eight two zero. There will be no extra charge for the call. <laughs> oh, it actually works. I then put together four of these circuits onto protoboard and then bolted them onto a piece of wood. It's not a permanent solution, but who knows whether this needs improving. And then when it's figured out properly, we'll make it into a more permanent enclosure. Oh, and also by the time I'd put this all together, Keith had coded in an optional screen to show you the status of what it's doing. And now that's all wired in, we're in a place to test multiple calls. Dial in two separate phone numbers at the same time. <laughs> Hello? Oh, that is so cool! <laughs> At this point, I had two lines working out the four. It seemed like a great time to actually test it out. So I shared all the information over on Patreon to let people call in and give it a go. Quite a few people rang and it was pretty awesome.
everybody called at slightly different times and there wasn't really an opportunity to test the queuing and the actual two phones dialing at the same time. And after a couple of hours of this, I decided to share a little video on TikTok because the views on TikTok, I don't tend to get that many. So there will hopefully be just a few more people that'll be able to call in just to kind of test it. But I was pretty wrong with that because within an hour, both videos that I put up on it, both got 100,000 views. And yeah, this thing went blooming crazy. <laughs> Ah. Ah. Multiple lines coming at the same time as well. We got a fresh one. Where's it going? Ah, oh, they hung up. Here we go. Here we go. Where are we going? Where are we? All in all, it registered about two and a half thousand extension calls through the exchange all in that day, which is pretty ridiculous. And it overloaded the trunking service. But it was a bit of a silly idea to pop it on TikTok because when I made a live stream on it for Patreon the day after, I'd used all of the incoming minutes from the trunking service that I had, and it ended up just being engaged and the phone line didn't work. So I'm really sorry. It was a bit of a stupid test on my part. So that's where we're up to on this project. It does need a little bit more fine tuning, and the audio and the queuing system does need a little bit of work. I'm going to leave it running for the rest of this evening check the pinned comment for the extensions and the number there'll be more and more extensions being added as time goes on and more like tape loops and things get plugged in and then this weekend when the museum is open i'm going to set up a live stream to film it whilst the museum's open so you can actually call it and actually see it doing its thing at the same time and even talk to people who have come to the museum as well i've been talking about this project over on build logs over on patreon for the past few months actually if you want to see all of these and also a load of updates on other projects and a load of music stuff and download this and that and all you want to support the museum and stuff like that then go and check it out over there because the support really helps to make this a bigger and better project i'm already talking about the next project over there actually and it's actually a pretty big and ridiculous music machine but anyway i'm look mum no computer this is the uax 13 telephone exchanger this museum is not obsolete and if you like what you see don't forget to subscribe don't be scared to try it